Shalom, Chavarim. I'm Stephen Benu. You're watching Israeli News Live. And guys, we do want to go into a subject that is very serious. Before I do, let me just mention to you real quick. Um, this major meeting that is going on in Israel this month, September uh, the 4th through the 23rd, it is an ecumenical gathering between the three monotheistic faiths there. Uh, this is from Dave Hodge's website there, also being reported uh, from Jerusalem Interfaith, uh, a house for all believers to open in Jerusalem. This is happening this coming month. Uh, I don't have any concrete evidence for sure that Pope Francis is to be there, but it is alluding that he is going there. It's something that Dave Hodges believes is going to happen. There is another lady that did an, uh, a, a video about this house for all believers from this article here also believes that Pope Francis is going to be there. I've had other sources back a good while back that has as well believed that he's going to hold a secret mass with the, uh, some of the Orthodox rabbis there, uh, even believed to be some of those that will be participating in the Third Temple services there. That he's hold a secret mass there. Is it going to be at this or not? I don't know for sure. But one thing I do know, this is probably going to be the most important event of the entire century uh, that's going to happen here. Israeli News Live, we want to be there. We'd like to be a part covering this to see what really does happen. If we can narrow down the window to see if the Pope is actually going for sure or not, we'll, we'll try to do that. But if not, I think it might be best that we're there from the very beginning from August the 4th, excuse me, September the 4th all the way through the 23rd or actually a couple of days after there just to make sure we cover everything for you guys. But if we're going to do that, we need your help in doing it because there's just no way this in September leading up to uh, Rosh Hashanah, leading up to uh, all the feasts that we have here. Uh, we have Yom Kippur, we have uh, the Feast of Tabernacles, Yom Sukkot that is, and it's an expensive time of month. Everybody in Israel raises all their prices on everything, and we normally try not to go during that time if we can help it because it's so expensive and we don't like to put that burden on the people that support the work that we're doing. But I feel like, brothers, sisters that are watching this, this is a very, very serious event. We need to be there. And it's, it's a personal passion as well for me. Let me just go ahead and share with you a few things here. Um, the Amen House of Prayer for All Believers is part of a 2016 Muk uh, Mukadashet festival from September 4th to the 23rd, an initiative created by Jerusalem Season of Culture and an annual festival in Jerusalem to bring together the world's three major faiths who share a belief in one God and a boundless love for Jerusalem to dialogue, study, and sing and pray together. Now they state in here that artists, actors, musicians, media figures from all over the world are expected to be here and it's believed that Pope Francis will be there as well. It is also believed to be to where they're going to birth the one world religion to actually give it teeth and power. I think it may even be where they bring about the announcement of the building of the third temple. Uh, per perhaps they're looking to see if they can coexist together during these times here. It is a very serious event and, I, uh, and, and, and also God has been dealing with my heart heavy on it. If you remember the other day when we did the broadcast here, uh, Syrian refugees prelude the coming of the two witnesses. Uh, now I'm just your brother. Let me just say that. I'm not claiming to be a one of these witnesses or anything like that. But we brought this out. And if you remember, I shared with you how Micah says right here, chapter 7, verse 8, Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall rise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Then in brackets, right here on the screen behind you, this message I wrote, this is a message to the Assyrians and to Edom. It was a warning from Micah that even though the destruction of both the house of Israel and the house of, of Judah took place, although 780 years apart, the, the Assyrians and the Edomians of those days were the ones that were the cause of these. And that's why I made that comment that this is a message to the Assyrians and Edom when he says, you know, don't rejoice against me, O mine enemy, when I shall fall, when I sit in darkness. Because why? Then he goes on down later and he talks about how God's going to bring judgment upon them. And in fact, when we get to verse 13, this was the judgment that happens to the Assyrians. Notwithstanding, the land shall be desolate because of them that dwell therein for the fruit of their doings. In other words, Micah saw that it was going to be a civil war. But what else do we have happen? As I mentioned, Edom as well. Why? Because Titus, a Roman general, according to the book of Obadiah, 
You remember that in the book of Obadiah? What happened? What did the prophet Obadiah say? Obadiah clearly, clearly uh, indicts. Uh, let me just pull that up for you real quick here. Uh, right there, got it right there on the spot there. And Obadiah there, if we go down to, I think, around the verse 8 there, we find out, it says, Shall I not in that day say that the Lord destroy the wise men out of Edom and the discernment out of the mount of Esau? And then he declares to you who Esau was. For the violence done to thy brother Jacob, shame shall cover thee and thou shalt be cut off forever. Well, you know, Esau never really did anything evil to Jacob while he was living. But it was through his descendants that this would happen. In the day that thou st st did st stand aloof, in the day that strangers carried away his substance and foreigners entered into his gates and cast lots upon Jerusalem, even thou wast this one of them. Jerusalem? Well, this isn't talking about the house of Israel, guys. This is talking about the house of Judah. And it's talking about who? Titus, the Roman general. And he's what? Of thy brethren. This is why Orthodox Jews know that Rome today is the descendants of Esau. It's because of Obadiah. But when it gets personal to me, is when we get on down here to verse 16. And this is where I shared with you. Those that don't know much about the ministry, maybe you've only been following here for a few months. Obadiah, chapter, uh, verse 16, chapter 1, only one chapter in Obadiah. For as you have drunk upon my holy mountain, so shall all the nations drink continually. Yea, they shall drink and they shall swallow down and shall be as though they had not been. May not seem like anything in English to most people, but remember those of you that do know, what did I tell you from the Hebrew language sitting on the wall and behind you here? Well, let me blow it, blow it up here a little bit more for you so you can see that. All right, let's see, verse 16. Okay. What does it say there? Okay, Tetzayin. Tetzayin means 16. It's the number 16 in Hebrew. The first two words at the top, Kikasha Shutetem, uh, which is the third word on the on, right up under the Tetzayin. Let me just point to it, guys. Kikasha Shutetem Al Ha Kodeshai. Okay, because, uh, because you have drunk upon my holy mountain. But what most people don't get is that it's in the masculine plural right here. Tem, Shutetem. Masculine plural. Do you know that back in 2014, the Pope of Rome, during uh, his Easter service, doesn't keep it on the true way of doing it, but on the Easter service, he goes, he holds a, a communion service in the upper room right above King David's tomb. Now, you remember in 2013, the Israeli government gave him an official seat at the tomb of David. Okay, Guglielmiati did a report about that, went nuts over it, the, the Israelis did, because there was no referendum. They just give the Pope an official seat at the King David's tomb. Are you serious? That makes him the King of Israel. Not only that, by the fact that he did it in the upper room and put his triple crown on, it shows that he is declaring himself to be what? the King Messiah, Mashiach of Israel. And now they're going to come and hold this big... Uh, deal there in Jerusalem, all the faiths coming together, what are they going to do? Declare the Pope to be their head or what? All right. Now, I want to say something. I'm going to tell you guys, and, and just in closing, I'm going to share this very simply with you. God dealt with me in a dream, not long after God revealed to me what this was all about right here. Oh, and by the way, let me finish this too real quick. Isha tu kol hagoim. Tamid, okay? And the word Tamid means con continually, all right? And, and they will continually, the, the, the nations or the Gentiles will continually drink upon my holy mountain. That, by the way, is not masculine plural where it's men only doing communion. That happens to be gender inclusive. In other words, both men and women were doing communion. And from that day forward, after the Pope did his communion, then the rest of them begin to coming in there and doing communion, both men and women. And it's kind of interesting, the Goim, the Gentiles, and it was all the different things churches, the Greek Orthodox, the Roman Catholics, etc., were all coming in. And yes, they were going to continually to drink upon God's holy mountain. We know it's Mount Zion because if you go down to the very next verse down here, it says here, uh, uh, see, but in Mount Zion or on Mount Zion, this is where it actually took place, right? Now, then God shows me in a dream, very powerful dream that comes upon me one night. I'm on Mount Zion. I see Orthodox Jews all gathered around there. They're praying. And I'm on the Mount Zion and I'm 
troubled by what's going on. I know something is wrong. And I knelt down. And the funny thing is, where I knelt down to pray, I'd been there many, many times, even when I lived in Israel. It was always like a sage grass growing there. And I, but at this point, there was only rocks and dirt there. And I knelt down to pray, laid myself prostrate on the earth, and I cried out unto God for the sake of Israel. And when I did, I looked up and there was a rock in front of my face about like this. And on it came writing in Hebrew, like an amber fire wrote on that rock and said, there's a man drinking upon my holy mountain. And then it went away. And then again, it came upon there again. And it was in the Hebrew language. And it says, you are to remove him. And I immediately, I came out of the dream and I was troubled in my heart. I'm like, God, who? I'm, I'm nobody. Well, I'm, I'm sorry. One thing I forgot to tell you about. Before I came out of the dream, I got up from there after I saw that part. And I began to look around on the mountain for the guy. I've told the dream before several times here on, on Israeli News Live on a YouTube channel here. And, um, and I began to look around through the crowd of different Orthodox Jews. And I came up and there was this man. He had his back to me, but right as I got close to him, he knew I was coming. And he took his glass and he dumped the wine out on the ground. And he says, I'm not drinking any longer. I said, I don't care. I said, you have to go. He said, but I'm not drinking any longer. I said, I don't care. God has said, you must leave this mountain. And then he asked me a strange question. I don't know why it happened, but he says, for how long? I said, I don't know. And then I came out of the dream. And guys, I'm going to tell you something. I'm not anybody. God knows I'm nobody. I, I consider myself the least of all the least. But it troubled me. And I thought, God, who am I? I mean, you know, people would write me, Brother Steve, that was the Pope, wasn't it? Well, it was not the Pope per se in, in, the, in the vision or the dream here. But the thing was, it was like a demonic spirit is what it was. Very arrogant man. And then something happened when I was in Israel here a few weeks back. I went there to the tomb of David. And while I was there, a good friend of mine there, rabbi there, he comes to me. We begin to talk a little bit. And I began to share with him about the prophecy here in Obadiah. And I told him what God showed me about the fulfillment of that. And his mouth just dropped open. He couldn't hardly believe what I was telling him. And another guy over there, a Palestinian guy, he was standing there and he goes, no, 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 it's not true. We, we have peace now. We have peace here. No more problems. No more problems. And then when I left, I left Israel and about a week after I left, the Greek Orthodox Church came in there. Now they claim in the newspaper that they weren't coming to try to hold a communion service. But my brethren stood there and blocked them from entering in King David's tomb. Because let me tell you something. They let in. They, they won't just block anybody. I've seen them let in all kinds of Christians to come into King David's tomb with no problem. But when you come parading around with all your crosses and stuff, they know something's up. And although they claimed that they were not coming there to do a communion service, they heard their ears opened and their eyes opened for the first time. And they began to realize a prophecy that I'd share with them that they had totally thought meant something altogether different. They began to recognize the word of God for the first time. And when I saw what they did, God laid it on my heart. That's how you remove him from off that mountain. Share the gospel of Yeshua with your people and you will stop what they're doing. And friends, I, I'm just telling you, I, I, I say it to you humbly and sincerely. I am only a watchman. I am nobody else. But one thing's for sure. I got to share with my people what's going on. I've got to at least tell them what's happening. I also want to cover as a journalist from a news perspective for the listeners that listen to this broadcast, I want to share with you from a, from a mutual perspective, not, you know, it's not there to, to cause trouble or nothing like that, but just sit there and share with the world what's actually going on there to see where this is going. What is the event really about? To interview people that are going in and out and stuff, to find out what's going on. We want to share that with you as well. So if you feel like that this is something that God 
once done. And God lays it upon your heart to help support it because it is a more expensive ordeal at this time of year. Then stand with us. Stand with us. You can go to IsraeliNewsLive.org. You can support this work there. Or you can go to IsraelReturns.com. That's IsraelReturns.com. You will see Danun Institute of Biblical Research there. Uh, in fact, that's what our ministry's title is, is Danun Institute. Uh, Israeli News Live is our news organization. But um, if you want to contribute, it's under Danun Institute of Biblical Research. Both places, though, have a donation place where you can click and donate online. Or at the end of this uh, audio portion here, or this video portion here, you will actually have a, a place where if you prefer to mail, you can mail us here in the Czech Republic. I'm Stephen Benoon. You're watching Israeli News Live, guys. It is a momentous situation that's about to occur in Jerusalem. And I can't guarantee, I can't say 100% that the Pope of Rome is going there. These are the two people that are suggesting that he is. Uh, and that is uh, uh, Dave Hodges believes he's going along with one other person that I've seen report on this. Uh, I think he's going as well, but that's just a personal opinion. Uh, but we want to be there because if he's going, it's definitely going to be the true start of a one world religion. I'm Stephen Benu with Israeli News Live. Shalom.